Hi everyone, I'm Taryn and this is Firth. And hopefully my cat is gonna leave me in peace right now. <laughs> Cause oh my goodness, she wants to play. Yeah, that's what happens when night falls. So we have version 0.99L now. And I have added a bunch of new features and a lot of them are because of all your wonderful suggestions. Because a lot of you have actually described, uh, described, described, subscribed, uh, that too, but registered to the forum. And it's incredibly active right now uh, compared to before where there was nothing. <laughs> so, and I'm absolutely thrilled about it. Uh, and the suggestions that are coming in are fantastic. They give me some directions as well on what to, what to favor. But some of the things I, I have to, uh, you know, um, put on hold or, uh, you know, remember as soon as I have done enough of the fundamental stuff. So uh, some of the interesting uh, things are, for example, the widgets. Yeah, we now have widgets. And that is stuff that pops up where your mouse pointer is. And so those can come in extremely handy. And I thought it was a very, very good call. It was that, and I, what I hooked up for that right now is just the silly color wheel, and uh, this will also experience some changes soon enough, um, or additions rather, and also the fluid parameters like fluidity and fluid smudge, and also, whoops, did it, uh, smooth uh, fluid sharpness. But that was just for consistency sake so i you know normally actually i don't change that much ideally i have it on a hundred percent because that uh, you know spares the system another blur of the of the vectors and so that makes it generally quite a bit faster too why the strange faux colors i don't know so uh you are. so there's that um, let's turn the fluids back down. Uh, I added a drying speed parameter whereby I really r recommend to uh, don't go faster than 50% <laughs> because that's nonsense to do that. Uh, but uh, if you go down, that's, that can be actually kind of nice if you slow down the drying then you have more time to play around with the fluids, but they are still drying. And that kind of creates also a very nice feel. I don't know. I don't mind that at all. I think that's kind of interesting. So there's that. And previously I was already showing to you uh, the build-up parameter and all that stuff in an earlier video. And the bristles for the brush. And the mouse speed. I'm not sure. Did I cover that? So now you can also slow down your mouse response to make softer strokes that has always been there but never had been parameterized so now I gave it a parameter and but the default has always been 75 point 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 huh did I speak about <laughs> precision <laughs> oh god there I go hey, that's important <laughs> maybe I changed that as well but yeah so yeah 75 has always been there but now you can Go slower if you wished. Huh. Huh. Oh, I like that. This one. Oh, yeah. So, what else? So, one of the brand new things in there, I have kind of shown in 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 this little three-minute galaxy thing, and that is the fractal brush. So you have your fractal noise brush, and yeah, with the fluids, that's fun. But if you turn the fluids down then you can actually see what's happening here. See, it creates a fractal noise pattern as you brush along. Of course, you can do that fast too. Da, 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 da. doesn't have to be slow. And so what you have here, I've still used the, the two parameters, bristle size and bristle count. And if you increase the bristle count, it actually scales out. So you scale it out and out. Oh, that was my cat. <laughs> Thank you. And you would see more of the fractal pattern which looks as if it was more bristles really i think and if you go down with the bristle count 
then you would see fewer bristles we make them larger and so forth um, so and if you increase the bristle size then eventually at some point it almost just fills the the brush band here the ribbon and if you go down in the bristle size then you get just small fractal splotches like so so bristle size and bristle count kind of keep their spirit in the use with the, with the fractal noise brush but you can see it's still a little not all too pretty here and there and um, because my whole ribbon brush implementation is really not the nicest well I'm working on it I'm trying to make it nicer I've done it I've gotten it a bit nicer already but there's more to come Ah, oh, yeah for example right now you have much softer changes in, in, in brightness when you use your pen pressure uh, that's one example and yeah and the fractal noise is actually surprisingly well I'd say dare I say kind of sophisticated the way it distributes uh, across your ribbon see when you take these turns it stays kind of consistent it, it tries to pinch where it's supposed to pinch and stretch where it's supposed to stretch and doesn't go crazy and then evens out again so there's that and of course that is all 10 times the fun once you have the fluids on and you can get really wacky stuff oh let me speed up the drying again there that's more fun oh and the most important change really is that you can now finally resize the window now that's a little weird with the recording going on because the larger the window uh, the slower it gets in the recording but not not worth worth really stays just as fast of course you wouldn't see how this is bigger now but anyway so yeah and you can go full screen as well and then you will have on YouTube just a tiny little <laughs> canvas here anyway or you yeah you know and right now it only looks choppy because it records oh okay if you want to go back to the original size of the canvas with the window just hit shift home and it resets to the default settings there or the size of the canvas rather okay so there's that and oh god it's just fun i just like <laughs> uh, it should be a good sign if even i can't get enough of it it's just wild ah uh, mm, ah but the newest of all the settings let me go to that uh, hmm let me, maybe we can just make this kind of like a cool dirty background there all right so we got a cool dirty background so the newest addition to the features is the brush bias look at that isn't that funny so I was observed in, in oil paintings and in, in these little tutorials uh, always how cool it looks when these little when you make these little bushes you know and you see it in like these Bob Ross tutorials or now Kevin Hill who is doing a fabulous job at that he's like absolutely brilliant brilliant kind of keeping the, the, the Bob Ross heritage alive and, and taking it up a notch kicking it up a notch really bringing it to the to that new level it's 2.0 truly and so yeah and you can get these beautiful brush effects very very simply no efforts at all so there's that da, 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 da. Sure. and of course you can still control everything here change the bristle size and you get all these different effects because they look so very different right now don't they <laughs> what is he talking about it's all the same yeah so yeah maybe a few more Door. so that doesn't look very impressive does it hmm well, what am i gonna do now 
and I was sure this is gonna be cool. I still am. Just hang in there, hold on. I'm done. In a second, here. No, we need some more. <laughs> no, I don't want to have bullshit. So, did I see? Ah, I can see bullshit. Why not? Why would I not see? Stupidly screwing with my mind. I can see whatever I want. Can I? Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. See you. Nonsense. Trees. Because trees are fun. So, I'm gonna change this back to zero. And we're gonna make a wacky little tree here. There. Ta da! Ta da! So, and now I to change the bias back up. Besides, that bias also goes for all of the brushes, so each brush can have uh, that bias principle basically. Mm, haven't even tried it with that one. Oh, yeah, that's cool too, why not? <laughs> uh, funny. Kind of the same, really. <laughs> Uh, you don't get the streaks as much because that's the continuous fr uh, uh, random brush. I wonder what this does. Huh, interesting. Maybe you don't want to do it like this. <laughs> anyway, so we take that standard bristle brush, number two. And you can very quickly get this kind of uh, tree canopy stuff. And I really enjoy the look of that. I don't know, it's fun. Uh, oof, oh, why not? Let's try something crazy. Make like blue light. And we can light the canopy blue because it has blue leaves. And it can because it's my canopy. And you can make yours orange or red. Red is probably cool too. <laughs> anyway, so there you go. See, it's that kind of typical stipple brush and the nice thing here is of course because you can control the bristle size you can make just a few bristles make really bright highlights and then can get these little just these little light specks as if like just a few leaves were reflecting the light source or something like that you know for example you know of course you can find all sorts of explanations for why you would want to do this but it's fun and now the brush number eight, the fractal brush, fantastic for tree bark. And this is, what's this, like a absurd kind of birch tree? <laughs> yeah, maybe, there you go. And then you have a nice little birch tree. Oh, let's add some more bristles again there. Oof, oh yeah, there. Pom, 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 pom. Okay. That's it. Enough. Voila! Isn't that cool? So, okay, so, so, let's take brush number eight again and just do some other stuff. So, the other thing that reminded uh, that this brush reminded me of was when you take a palette knife and you just scratch downward, you know, like that. Kind of has, it reminds me of that. You can probably adjust that to, to be even more like that. See what I mean? So you can get these kind of effects. So that's kind of interesting. So, and then we have a little strange slope there. That easy. And there. Yeah, so this looks more like some kind of st strange. <laughs> graphic design type of thing, I think. Uh, anyways, oh yeah, but you can do, of course, naturally, whatever you want. Even use average, you can get some nice effects, like you just lay down some color and then average over it, so you get a bit more uh, values there before you start putting the lights in. And also, these brushes uh, all respond to your pen tilt. If your tablet, I hope you're using one, of course, uh, supports that, then they use the pen tilt. And that is quite significant, that's quite important with with this whole brush idea here. Um, <clears throat> I have a simplified mouse implementation where it can follow the direction you're moving, similar to the ribbon brush or the brush number five that would, uh, you know, just... F oh, 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot that I had to change the direction. Uh, that's interesting too, actually. Well, why not? <clears throat> Maybe I should try my software before I show it to you. I don't know. It's just an idea. Ah, uh, it's kind of funny though. Huh? What if I go down in the opacity? Whoa! <laughs> uh, oh yeah, it's cool. <laughs> And now for something completely different. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll fix that. <coughs> so anyway, yeah, normally it would respond to whichever direction you're moving. Like the ribbon brush, who still does it just fine. So actually, it's kind of funny. You can do like a little, like these uh, Chinese or Japanese. Uh, yeah, it's probably Japanese rather, the paper umbrellas. <laughs> anyway, the whole thing looks kind of like that, has a kind of, may I say, Asian feel to it, generically speaking. So, so that's that. Uh, I think that covers most of it right now. Uh, what else might be new? Mm, I don't know. Not enough. Did I talk about how the zooming has changed? And that was because Dr. Petter, creator of sculptures and other fantastic little tools, uh, kept complaining about how lousy my zoom was and, uh, and told me how I should do it. And I did it like this and look at that. I think he's right. It's kind of nice. But I have the little extra thingy where <laughs> you can oh that was interesting ah but it's screwing around right now because of the recording it's a little stuttery it shouldn't do that that's a bit weird so the other thing of course i have the mouse wheel so wherever you point your mouse pointer and you use the wheel it zooms into there and i have a generic num numeric pad minus and plus zoom that only responds to the canvas itself wherever it is it zooms into itself smaller and larger that's that. And home brings everything to its original 100% zoom. Well, I think that's it, pretty much. For more, you should try it out yourself and come join us now. Yes, I can say us because it's really a wonderful crowd already over at the forum. And yeah, and share your ideas, share your experiments. I'd absolutely love to see more. I can't I can't get enough of what you guys are doing. It's, it's just fantastic. It's, it brings me joy, it really does. Oh, there was one more thing I wanted to show you just for the fun of it. Uh, yeah, that's that's kind of fun. I kind of like this one. And I'm, you know, I'm gonna save it. Look at this, uh, tons of landscapes. <laughs> I'm having fun with landscapes. <laughs> I did this little paint along with uh, one of Kevin Hill's clips online there, and I can show that to you. Hold on. <laughs> there, Kevin, paint along. Boink, there. Isn't that great? I mean, and that was before I added the whole bias. Actually, it was kind of the reason for why I added the brush bias, because uh, that works so much nicer, you know, now if I uh, went in here and added another tree with that brush it instantly gets like that that f f it captures the feel a lot more of, of, of what he's showing basically so that's kind of fun da, 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 da. Mm, pink water color. Blues. Uh, yeah whatever yeah you get the idea except for of course that I yes I have brush number eight <laughs> Ta -da -ta -da. And another birch made it into the forest. Isn't that fun? There. So, yeah, so that was fun. I thought it was really great. He has, he pushes the whole idea of depth a lot more. Actually, of course, I thought that the atmospheric layers looks like that. So, mumble, mumble. And I added just an additive layer and added some more bloom and gloom and all that kind of stuff. And it just it looks just a bit more exciting and the other thing i've noticed when i was watching his stuff is that 
when you see oil paintings, they, of course, most of the time are in some kind of artificial light or, you know, if they're not there, then they're in sunlight. However, they barely ever are in like, you know, fluorescent white light, you know. And uh, But if you look at the, the normal canvas on, on a computer, it's just, you know, white. Not in Werf, no, in Werf you can decide for a light color and you illuminate your image differently. I've already, see, how immediately it gets warmer just because I use a warm light color yeah. as opposed to, you know, full on there. <laughs> Actually, it has its own appeal, it looks kind of clinical. Mm. Yeah, it would look like that, really dull. That's like pure white light and... Uh, uh. Mm, yeah, yeah. Rather give it a bit of character there and a bit of ambient light. Boink. And already it brings out really what is there. See, that's what I mean. It's like there is already so much more than we normally get to see, you know, when you look at the, just the stupid. Yeah, sure, you could say, hey, you just painted, you know, like, but uh, I hope you understand what I mean. It's just. It's a fun, fun feature, a fun aspect of the whole thing. Where were we? Oh yeah, we were here. Boink, there's a, oh, it doesn't look as nice, doesn't, hmm, well, it's different. Uh, oh, I, I, yeah, now I remember. I wanted to show you what else you can do with brush number eight, which is a bit wacky. <laughs> I didn't have to load this. Uh, you can use it quite successfully, so. Uh, to, to get a really nice kind of charcoal feel uh, or pastels or, or you know oil pastels whatever. Uh, actually let's take the bump down take the glossiness down like so and then you see depending on how you how you were setting it but you can get these really nice effects that feel very very much like charcoal and it just adds another dimension to you know what you can do in, in, in verve. I think. I mean, later on, I promise I'm going to do a decent canvas engine where you have uh, a canvas texture uh, and all that. Um, and uh, the paint will respond properly to the structure of the paper and all that. But for now, you know, just as a little, you know, fun pace, uh, change of pace, so to say, you can uh, go ahead and uh, play with brush number eight and, and get these kind of very interesting alternative looks that are, I think they are, they are not to be underestimated. You can achieve quite some cool stuff with that. Especially because you can change the size of the structure at any given moment naturally. And that is alone a very strange kind of neat thing to be able to do. But yeah, I mean, that's the whole other thing I keep saying and I absolutely in keep insisting that Worth should really be considered its own art tool, not not a desperate attempt to be something that it can't really be. Like, this is not, uh, you know, a perfect oil simulation or anything like that, you know, whatever. But it just, what I wanted to put in here more than anything was the, the the benefits of the feel of working with paint, you know? Uh, actually, it's almost it's weird, weird, it's almost pretentious for me to say that. It's the moment I noticed it had the powers that I was really hoping for in, 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 uh, in other tools, you know? So yeah, that, that was what got me excited, you know? Not so much, oh, now I can simulate this or simulate that or whatever, no, it's just, I can provide a tool in which it is possible f for you to work with with these traits of the paint. You know, and you can just do these kind of blendings, and yeah, you can see. As you see, it's just it's a very different look naturally, but, uh, but it's really fun. I mean, I absolutely like to play with that. And maybe you do too. You can change the bristle size, make it a bit smaller, and then oh. and a bit like this, and you get all these different kind of structures, textures, whatever you like to call them. It's just interesting. 
just provides a different dimension, I think, to, to, to how you can be creative. And, uh, at what point in life did I start to start? It must have happened at some point. No shame there. I can start out. There. So, you're something different. I should leave you alone now. <laughs> and instead, again, hope to see you on the forum and uh, and hope this was a bit of an inspiration for you. And there's more to come every... No, and right now, not every day, because I really kind of have to do some paying work, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, especially after weekends count with some potential updates can count on them and yeah so that's that so I'd say boop. <laughs> oh I'm just gonna it's gonna get worse trust me it's gonna get worse <laughs> I'm not gonna continue now <laughs> okay ta-da yep ta-da ta-da bye and bye for now <laughs>